This is a video about the absolute basics of Altium Designer. So the first thing I need to do is get the environment set up the way that I like. So in particular, I need to be signed in so that I can use the online repository of components. So that is uh, click here, sign in, and uh, type in your details and press sign in. And you should see a username appear once that happens. Uh, the next thing that I need is the Explorer panel to be visible. So that's View, Panels, and Explorer. So Explorer refers to uh, online repository of components, which is called the Altium Content Vault. And so I will be using the Altium Content Vault in uh, the designs which I create. So now that I have the uh, Explorer panel uh, set up and, and visible, I'm going to create a project. So that is File, New, Project. and uh, I can set up here, this is a PCB project, and I will give it a name and choose a location where I would like to store it. So the project is basically a, a container into which we place our schematics and our PCB layouts. So with the project set up, I now need to add a schematic to it. So that's right click, add new, and then schematic. And this gives me a schematic document. So the first thing I would like to do is set this up. So I, I don't really like this default title block. Uh, so I have a template that I would like to use. So I select design templates and uh, choose a file. And here is the template which I previously created. So I'll make this file available on LenJCU so you can use it as well. And what this will do is set up a title block, uh, which looks a bit like this. So there will be uh, some asterisks here, which correspond to the parts of the title block that we need to fill in. The way that we do this, it's a, a little bit counterintuitive. What we do is we go over to the properties view. If you don't have properties visible, you would go view panels and select properties here so that you can, can see this control. Uh, and then on properties, we select parameters. So parameters here with, with nothing else selected, these parameters refer to my document. And in, for example, there is a parameter called title, uh, which I can type in here and will appear in my title block. So you should go ahead and fix up the other uh, asterisks as well. So the uh, schematic document here uh, now I need to, to add some components to it. So I'm going to save this file. So Control S, Save, uh, and I'll give it a name. So this is my main schematic, my top level schematic. And so I'll, I'll save that file. Now, the first thing that I would like to add are some headers. So the Components tab and the Explorer tab are both places where I can get components from. So what's the difference between them? So components refers to so-called libraries. So libraries are files which itself contain components. And in particular, I, I'm, today I'm going to use a, a library that is shipped with Altium, which is called miscellaneous connectors. So miscellaneous connectors has in it uh, a bunch of headers, and I'm going to place some headers in my design. So for example, I would like a three pin header. So I click three pin header, click and drag across onto my schematic, uh, and then I would be able to position it where I want. Now for this particular one, I would like that uh, symbol to be rotated. So I click on it and hit the spacebar to rotate that uh, symbol around. The next thing that I would like is for the numbers to run down the page instead of up. So I click and drag as if I'm moving it around, and then I press Y on my keyboard. So I flip along the Y direction. There's also an X flip, which looks like that, uh, but I'll use the Y flip to get the numbers organized the way that I want. I'll come back to components. I would also like a, a two pin header. So let me find it. Here it is. Two pin header, which I will place and flip. You have to be holding down the mouse to get the flip to work. Um, so there we go, get that flip. And I'll grab another copy of that two pin header, Control C, Control V, and I'll paste it over here and flip it to get those numbers the way that I wanted. So the circuit that I'll be building today is a, uh, an amplifier circuit. So I'm going to use a, an operational amplifier. So I go to Explorer, because I would like to find this in the Altium Vault. I'll make this a bit wider so we can see what we're doing. Uh, and for this particular design that I'm drawing up today, uh, it is the LM348 operational amplifier, which I'm going to use. So I'll search for that uh, and then here will be my results. So I get actually a few results, so I need to kind of choose which one that I would like to display, or which one I would like to use. So I, I see here these ones are labeled with uh, no lead, so 
probably we should use a lead-free process. So I'll select, uh, I'll, I'll pick from these three and I'll have a look at what the differences are. So we've got basically the same description here. So this is uh, quad op amp 14 pin lead-free uh, and I've got one, two, three. Uh, I, I notice here that this uh, third revision has a, like a nice 3D model. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, pick this one just because it's nice to have this 3D model. So uh, another thing to notice about this particular part is that it has these four different components. So part A, B, C, and D. So these correspond to the four op amps that are within this chip. So the way that I deal with a component like this, uh, so right click place and let's choose say part A to begin with. So I click that, come over to my uh, schematic and you'll notice that uh, this is placing part A. So I see in the top right, I see U question mark. So U question mark will be the component designator. I haven't given it a number yet, so that's the question mark. Uh, and then there's an A which indicates the first uh, like sub part of this component. Um, so I click my mouse and now I'm placing part B, part C and part D and now I'm back to A again. Well, I don't want a, a second chip, I only want one. So I press the escape key uh, to stop placing that. So I'm going to put these over here for now and focus on this, uh, this first op amp within my chip. So the, the circuit that I'm building uh, will be a little amplifier. So I need some resistors to actually build uh, the, the standard kind of inverting amplifier design. So for that I'm going to come back over to the Explorer and it so happens that for this design what I want is a resistor, uh, resistor so I type res, I want one kilo ohm, I want it in a 0805 package and I would like a 1% tolerance. So I type all of those keywords in and I press enter and I wait for the search results and I see actually quite a few components so I have to look for the one which is the the 1k there it is uh, and there's the component we have a nice little 3d model and we have a nice uh, schematic symbol so I'm happy with that one uh, right click place it has to kind of download it from the internet so it lags for a moment and I will put that component in I only want one of them so I hit escape the next thing that I want is a 10k so uh, let's search for that one, 10K0805, 1% tolerance, wait for the results. There's my part, right click place, and we will put that component on our schematic as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much ready to start wiring uh, this up, this circuit up at this point. Uh, so what I'm gonna use this first header here for, I will use that for my power supply. Uh, so power supplies work through uh, this menu that you can see here. So that was um, the little ground symbol. Press and hold on that and I get this menu. And first of all, I would like to have a plus 12 volt um, power supply. So click there, click the component uh, and click out. Now I would like to draw a wire that connects from the first pin of the header across to that symbol. So here it is, place a wire, click that, click, click and escape. So that now has joined this pin, pin one on this header up to the plus 12 volt um, connector here. The next thing that I want is ground, so click and drag, select ground, and I'll place that component, control W for a wire, click, click, and escape. And there we go. Now I would also like a minus 12 volt supply. Now I don't have a minus 12 on here. So what I'm gonna do is pick the plus 12, and then I hit the tab key. Now the tab key in Altium causes the current action here to be paused, and this properties window to be opened up. So in the properties window, what I'm gonna do is change the name. So the name for a power symbol such as this, the name is very important. So the name indicates that all components with the same name will be connected. So I would like minus 12, I could give it any name that I like. I can call this some string of letters if I like, um, but it's useful to give it descriptive names and minus 12 is pretty good. So press enter to accept, I'm gonna rotate that part and put it in here. Control W for wire connector, click, click escape. And I've made that connection. So I have now uh, a power symbol for plus 12, power symbol for minus 12, and power symbol for ground. So those are going to be used elsewhere in my circuit. So copy, control C, control V, I need to connect my power rails up to my op amp. So I'll just copy those symbols and stick them over here. 
Uh, I also have the ground, which is connected to uh, the positive input here. Now, if I click and drag this ground, you see the wire comes with it, and, and that indicates that I've actually made a successful connection. So it's kind of a useful check uh, to make. Now I'm going to hook up, so it was Control W to start drawing a wire, click into there, Control W, I'll connect this, Control W, and I'll come down here to the output and hook that up. Now this uh, header will be for the input to my circuit. So one of the uh, pins will be ground, so let me copy that one down and connect it up. Uh, the next one will be the actual signal which will be connected. So the way that I'm going to do this, I could draw a wire that comes all the way across. By the way, spacebar changes the, um, the orientation of that wire, so you can use that. And I, I could have drawn this all the way across and made that connection like that. But generally in a schematic when you have these really big long wires, that's kind of messy. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to show you something else. So I'm going to bring a little wire across and just go that far out. And then I'm going to place a net label. So place, net label. Now a net label is a way for me to join up different parts of the schematic without actually having a tangled mess of wires. So right now it's called net label one. That's not a good name. Tab key. Open up the properties box over here. Uh, and I'm going to call this one input. Press enter. And I'm going to place input. Notice the little uh, red X. So the little little red cross there corresponds to the wire that I'm actually going to place this on. So if I was sort of down in here somewhere in between two wires, well, which, which wire does it affect? Well, it's the one with the little red X. So I will put my little red X kind of on the end there. And there's my input sim, uh, net name. I want to connect that same net name up over here. So I'm going to bring a little bit of wire out. I'm going to grab my net name and copy it. But you'll notice that the little... Uh, X is kind of in the left corner. And maybe I don't want that, maybe I might think it's a little bit neater if I do something else. So I'll show you what I can do to change that. There's a justification um, option here. So I change that to uh, the right hand side, which now means that the little X, let me just pull that off the, uh, pull that off the wire. So I just copied that. Uh, the little X over here, once I set that justification, will be on the right hand side so I can connect uh, connect it up to the, the wire that I see there. So that means this wire and this wire are now connected together because I've given them the same net name. I'm also going to hook up an output, so that's Control W to start drawing a wire, and I will place net label, tab, and this one I will call output. Uh, sorry, I will place net label, output, enter. I accidentally pressed escape, enter. Uh, which I can now place onto my schematic like this. Uh, and of course I need to hook up the output over here to my final header. So I can do that by copying my net name, drawing a little wire coming out, hooking these up, making sure that now when I grab the text and drag it, the wire comes with me, means I've got it right. Uh, and I will also connect ground uh, up to here. So place ground and put it there. All right, so we're getting close. Uh, one other thing that I need to do is deal with these other parts of the op amp. So it's generally a good idea that uh, unused components in your circuit should actually be uh, hooked up in a certain way. So something that's reasonable to do for uh, these op amps would be to uh, just put a ground at the positive input and then connect their output just with with no gain and just run it right the way back in. Let me just tidy that up, that's a little bit messy, like so. Uh, and I can actually grab this wire and I can copy it and I can paste that same template onto these components as well. I didn't quite get that lined up right. Move it across and there we go. So now if I grab the uh, the actual op amp component and move it, you see the wire comes with me, so it's properly hooked up. Uh, so that's that's looking a bit better. Uh, now I notice that I have these kind of red underlined, wavy underlined things over here. And so that's a, a warning. It says that something's not right. And, and the thing that's not right is that none of these components have designators yet. So I have our question mark. 
right? So if if you give this to someone to solder the board for you and they're all called R question mark, then uh, they think you're not a very good circuit designer. So we need to actually give them numbers. So I can double click, uh, open up the properties, and I could type in here a designator and I could number them however I wanted. Um, but we're busy engineers, we don't have time to number all these things by hand. Let me show you the faster way. So tools, annotation, annotate schematics, and I get a nice little properties window where it will automatically create numbers in a certain sequence. So in my case, across and then down, yeah, that sounds all right to me. You can also choose, so down and then across or whatever makes sense. You press update changes list. Uh, it says that it's gonna change so many different things from P question mark to P2 and so on. I'm happy with those. Accept changes, it gives you a confirm dialog, says I'm gonna change this to this and so on. Happy with that, I hit execute. Close and close. So now all of my components now have nice numbered designators, which is very good. Uh, let me save this, so uh, Control S will save that file. Uh, so what I should do at this point is check whether there are any warnings. So Altium has this uh, sort of error checker, and they call it a compiler. Uh, so it's a little strange. It's not actually compiling code. It's actually just doing some error checking. Uh, right click, compile. And I actually get a few uh, issues here, which I should look at. So I'm going to put this messages window in the bottom of my window, uh, and then let's have a look. And I've got some errors. So duplicate net names wire. So it kind of double click on it, and it zooms me into this part of my op amp. So what's going on here is I've got actually the same pin, so pin four of this chip, pin four, pin four. I've got the same pin uh, and I'm using it kind of inconsistently. So here I've got this plus 12 and here I've got nothing. So it's telling me that something's weird about that. So what I'm gonna do is actually put the uh, little plus 12 power symbol, paste it in on each of those and I'll do the same for the uh, the negative rail of my op amp as well. Save that, right click compile, uh, that's looking a bit better. So net ground has no driving source, that's because it doesn't know what is going to be on the other side of this header. So it's a little bit of a, of a warning, notice here it's warning instead of error, it says are you sure you don't actually have anything that's powering the circuit? Well yeah I do, I'm just going to connect it to the header and it doesn't know about that so we can ignore that warning. Uh, and same thing here, we've got uh, something coming into this amplifier and again it doesn't know where that signal is coming from, it's kind of off board through this header. Uh, but other than that everything looks fine, so I'm pretty happy with this uh, circuit layout so far. Uh, so what I should do, final thing that I should do is kind of neaten this up a little bit. It's good to label the different parts of your your schematic so that somebody who's jumping in can kind of see uh, the different parts that you have. So there's a, uh, a place text tool here. So I click, uh, hit tab, I'm going to call this part the power supply. I'm going to make the font size a little bit larger. I'm happy with all of that. Press enter, jump across and click to place it. Um, over here, amplifier and place. Tab key, output, I press enter and place. Tab key, input, click to place. And finally, these are unused op amps, so I'll place them there. And escape key to get out of that, that tool. Um, so that's looking a little bit better, so I will uh, save that, and then in the next video I will show you how to turn this into a actual printed circuit board.